Hi guys, it's Kayla, and welcome back to Dangerous Relationship. Today we're going to read Chapter 3, Ryohei's Policy. After Ryohei's sudden shout, the cafe was bailed in complete silence. Ryohei? Get your hands off her. He reached over to pull Subaru's arm off of me. It's fine, right? She's not your girlfriend, is she? No. So what does it matter? It's no sin for me to show interest in a pretty girl. Subaru glanced at me with a smirk. Subaru? Let's go home, shall we? What's your name? I... Say nothing. It didn't feel right going along with him in this tense situation. She's Kayla. Hey, you stay out of this. Kayla, where do you live? I've got a car. I'll drive you there. Don't. Subaru led me to the cafe exit with his arm around my shoulder, completely ignoring Ryohei. Hey, I said don't. He lunged out and pulled Subaru around by the shoulder. It seemed to me a fight would break out at any second, but Subaru seemed totally relaxed. Why are you so worked up? Do you have feelings for her or something? Um, you don't, right? Why can't I enjoy her too? Um, don't say it like that. Come on, Ryohei, what's your problem? She... He hesitated as if struggling for words. She what? She... She is... You're so easy, Ryohei. Look at how much you're blushing. Surprisingly, his face blushed even more when Subaru said that to him. It's not like that. It's not. As if trying to convince himself that, he repeated that line over and over. When he glanced at me, our eyes met, making him look the other way. She's just a friend. A friend I care a lot about. And I'm just worried for her. If she's just a friend, it's okay then. It shouldn't matter if... Subaru looked at my face, which made his words drift off into silence. Um, there were tears in my eyes. We're crying? I knew we were nothing more than friends, but just hearing that from him made me cry. We went out as friends, we held hands as friends, and we kissed as friends. We were just friends, so nothing he said was wrong. But even so, Kayla, my tears just wouldn't stop flowing out. Kayla? Oh, I got my name switched, by the way, so that's why they're saying Kayla. With my vision blurred my tears, I couldn't even see Ryohei's face to see his reaction. I'm sorry, this is my fault. I was just... Just then, the door burst open, ringing the bell once again. Someone came trampling in, making lots of noise. Ryohei! I knew you'd be here. In came his manager and the leader of New Voice, Koichi Omoto. Upon seeing Ryohei, Subaru, and me with tears, the two of them seemed utterly confused. Welcome, what can I get for you today? <laughs> the owner. The cheery voice of the owner seemed so strange to hear in the oppressing silence. Um... Subaru, and who is this? I wiped my face with a handkerchief from the owner while Koichi looked at me curiously. Um, I... As if completely ignoring my presence, the manager started yelling furiously at Ryohei. Ryohei, what the heck do you think you're doing running away from the studio like that? Sorry. Do you have the faintest idea what would happen if someone saw you with a girl like this? Um, surprisingly, it was Subaru who spoke up in Ryohei's place. It's my fault. I brought her here. She's with you then? Yeah, she's my girlfriend. <gasps> um, I'm just not gonna say anything. Uh, I wasn't sure what I should say in this sort of situation. Just go along with it. Subaru whispered quietly in my ear. Ryohei looked like he had something to say, but he stopped himself at the last moment. I was gonna introduce her to him, so that's why I called Ryohei here. Sorry you had to see us have a fight like that. Hmm? Koichi didn't seem to be buying the story. In any case, the manager grabbed Ryohei by the arm like he were a thing and pulled him away. Come with me, we're short on time and the next shooting is about to start. Okay. Ryohei nodded and followed soberly, following the manager and Koichi out of the cafe. Thanks for coming. The bell on the door jingled as it shut behind them. Well then, Subaru turned to me with a face of regret and disappointment. Sorry, this was all my fault. Huh? Ever since grade school, he's been too busy with his work to have a girlfriend. More like they never gave him the chance even if he wanted to. I remembered how ecstatic Ryohei was just by eating fast food together at night. It was pitiful yet touching at the same time. Seeing him with a girl for the first time, I couldn't help but tease him. Why? He's never been in love before, so he has a hard time admitting his feelings. I was trying to force it out of him, but I only ended up hurting you two. It's okay, we're just friends anyway, he meant what he said. I'm not so sure about that. Hmm? I think he's pretty serious about you. Subaru surprised me with one hefty confession. Really? Well, forget I said that. It means nothing unless he says it on his own. Subaru, what good is your advice? You haven't even had any luck with women yourself. Off behind the bar, the master chuckled to himself, quite pleased at his interjection. <laughs> Shut up! I've heard enough out of you. I just haven't met the one is all. I had to laugh seeing Subaru so flustered and blushing. See? You even made her laugh. At me. <laughs> good to see you smile. Here you go. It got cold, so I poured you another. Thank you. 
He set down a cup of hot chocolate in front of me with a clink. I brought the cup to my lips and took a sip. Subaru watched me, smiling with a gentle expression. You aren't the one for me, are you? Hmm? Nothing. I hope you two make it. In love. Love. There was no doubt in my mind that I had fallen in love with Ryohei, the superstar singer. Oh my god, she's moving so fast. In love with him. On one of my days off, I headed into a recording shop to do something when I ran into Yuki. Kayla? Yuki? I turned to face her after placing the new voice CD I was holding back on the shelf. That's the one released tomorrow! Did you come to get it early? Yuki had four smaller looking CDs in her hand already. Why do you have so many? These are the regular and the limited edition, so these are for listening and for safekeeping. Yuki held all of them to her chest as if hugging them. You don't say. That's what you came for too, right? I'm pretty sure Yuki's the stalker girl. Um, I'm just gonna say of course. I mean, we were looking at the CDs. Of course. Here. With a thrilled grin on her face, Yuki held out the set to me in her hands. Um, I'm too strapped for cash to buy all four. Then I'd buy just the limited edition if I were you. Yuki picked out the thickest limited edition in the bunch and handed it to me. Uh, okay. Inside the thick box were posters of new voice included with the purchase. Locking eyes with Ryohei in the poster made me short of breath. I felt like such a fangirl. Heading to the register, I couldn't help but shrug and wear a bitter smile. Oh my god, look! Shrill screams suddenly filled the air. I looked around to see what was going on. Kayla, quick, come see! Having paid already, Yuki started tugging my arm for me to hurry. I quickly took my bag in her seat and was dragged by her to the street. What's going on, Yuki? The group's coming to the shop to campaign for their new CD. What? I wonder, will Ryohei be with them? My heart fluttered with anticipation, but also with worry. Ever since he called me just a friend, I hadn't seen him at all. He had sent multiple messages to my phone, but not once did I reply to any. Instead, all the messages I wrote but never sent filled up my drafts folder. From top to bottom, it stored all my messages that were written, but never sent. There he is! Ryohei! Uh, Yuki launched her arm in the air and waved towards the new voice crew. There was Takuya, Koichi, their youngest member, Kara Mizushima. Thank you. Thanks for your support, everyone. And Ryohei was there as well. He was surrounded by a swarm of fans, protected only by a few mere guards. As he waved to his fans, I knew there was no chance I was getting near him. I was just one of the many who would never enter his eye. Ryohei! Yuki blasted out with a deafening screech. It was so loud it attracted the attention of Ryohei himself, who smiled at her. Thanks for coming. Kya! He looked at me! He spoke to me! What am I gonna do? I wanna burn this image in my mind! So excited she was that she shook my shoulders and made my bones rattle. And then... His eyes looked straight at me. Huh? Ryohei's face changed to a stern expression as he recognized me. I was positive he saw me. His face was blank, making it impossible to read his emotions. What? Yuki, who was watching him intently, looked back and forth between him and me. Kayla... I read Ryohei's lips as he whispered my name into the open air. Next to him, Takuya saw I was there and gave me a wink. Kya! He tried to whisper something into Ryohei's ear. The screams all around suddenly grew louder, making it impossible to hear. To combat the noise, he raised his voice and spoke to Ryohei a bit louder. Zoning out again? Cut it out, we've got work to do. After snapping out of it, Ryohei glanced at me once before vanishing into the shop. I distinctly hear him say, again, which means it wasn't the first time. Ryohei. Yuki watched on with a chafed look as I call out his name quietly. Kayla! As I was waking from a daydream, I was startled by Yuki yelling at me. You're gonna lose them if you don't follow. Just a minute, girl. I saw that. Huh? Ryohei was staring right at you. Not only that, but he said your name. Even Takuya winked at you. <laughs> you caught that? Don't underestimate the power of a fan. Um, you better tell me right now what sort of relationship you have with New Voice. No, wait. You and Ryo hate first. Y you should just go to the handshake event before the line gets too big. You're coming with me. Yuki grabbed my arm and dragged me to stand in the line for Ryohei. Thank you. I'm grateful for your support. As fans lined up to meet him, he shook their hands with a smile. Eventually, it was Yuki's turn, but he froze up when he noticed me behind her. Ryohei, I just bought all of your new CDs. I'm always watching you. I, uh, thanks. Ryohei? You've had your turn. Next, please. When I stepped in front of him, his lost expression crushed my heart. I'm always cheering for you. Thanks. He gently took my hand and shook it. His hands felt so incredibly warm. Next, please. I went to step out of the way, but Ryohei wouldn't let go of my hand. Huh? Kayla, 
why didn't you respond to any of my messages? When he asked me in a hushed voice, I looked around to see if anyone was watching. Fortunately, just the girl behind me was giving me a dirty look for making her wait. However, off to the side, Yuki was watching us closely. Ryohei, my hand. When he finally released it, I hurried to Yuki who grabbed me in turn. We need to talk. So the two of us left and head to that quiet cafe for some girl talk. Alright, let's have it. Um, I think we should tell her the truth. The truth is, I kind of know Ryohei. I figured that out a long time ago. I want to hear how well you know him. I told her all about my work as a stylist and how I met Ryohei. About how I fell in love with him and how he called me just a friend. Even saying the word friend out loud felt like putting needles in my heart. Hmm. Yuki hummed thoughtfully after listening quietly the whole time. What I don't get is why you're so down about it. As a fan, I'd be ecstatic if you called me a friend. She made a pretty good point. Besides, who cares if he called you his friend? There's nothing stopping you from pursuing the relationship further, is there? It's not like you confessed to him and he said no, right? No, I guess not. See? I wish I had your worries. Yuki spoke while pounding her hand loudly against the table. The sudden noise startled the owner who glanced anxiously at us. Hey now, don't you go wild and start breaking my cafe. It's okay. She leaned back to chug a cup of milk tea before slamming it back on the table. Please, I'm begging you, be more careful of my antiques. I've made up my mind. About what? I'm going to do everything in my power to support you two. Huh? I want the people I love to be happy. Yuki. You and Ryohei, I love you both. Besides, it's better for you to be with him than some random female star. Choosing someone normal like you sounds a lot like something he would do. Tears formed at the corner of her eyes. She's kind of creepy fangirl. I could tell that she really adored Ryohei a lot more than I could give her credit for. It made me feel terrible for telling her my worries when she loved him so much. Yuki, I'm sorry. It's okay, if you two do end up going out together. She continued after wiping away her tears. That means I might get to meet him in person. The table rattled as she pounded it again, drawing worried glances from the owner. I knew she was only bluffing, pretending to be strong even though it hurt. Thanks, I don't think my chances are good though. Why would you say that? You saw how it was back there. He was surrounded by so many people. Why would he pick just me out of everyone? What chance do I have anyways? Huh. Yuki squinted her eyes as she peered dubiously at me. He even has guards and everything. Maybe I'd just be a bother. You saw his face when he saw me. He was like, what the heck is she doing here? Um. Are you really that dense? Do you really think he looked pissed off at seeing you? Well, yeah. Jeez, let me guess, you've never dated anyone, right? And have you? I sure as hell have. What? Really? I heard the owner's surprised voice of disbelief rise in the distance. He had apparently been eavesdropping on us. I've dreamed about dating each and every one of them already. So her dating experience was purely a trip through Fantasyland. First, into Kuya and Karu and their leader, Owen. Oh, he's so wild. Karu is a bit younger, but you wouldn't believe how assertive he is. <laughs> She's actually crazy, guys. Her face blushed red with what were obviously very fond memories for her. But you know, Ryohei was pretty much my favorite all around. We've dated for so long, I can tell just by his face what he's thinking. That's just in your dream. No, he was acting weird back there. I know it. After hearing everything you told me, I finally know why. Why is that? He wasn't troubled about you being there at all. Just the opposite. Huh? But I'm not gonna tell you. It's frustrating for me to say it. What? You figure it out yourself. I know you can. All on my own? Her words very closely resemble what Subaru had told me the other day. These kinds of things are better to learn on your own. <sighs> Just then, my phone beeped with a message from my stylist coworker. Tell you more later, but new voice needs you. Of course. Their stylist got sick and they need you. Must be nice to know them. Good luck. Well, I want to get home so I can listen to this CD. I'll see you later. Yuki got up and stretched before paying for her drink. You got a good friend there. The owner said to me with a smile after she had gone. Chapter 4. No one else but you. Okay guys, that's it for chapter 3. Things seem to be moving pretty fast in this one, probably since there's only 8 chapters, so they kind of have to pick up the pace. But we'll see what happens when we rush to Ryohei and New Voices aid next time. Thanks for watching!